last band of Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord. And sweet is the way he gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. This is a day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, that we're here today. And we pray that there would be words of encouragement to lift up hearts, that the joy of the Lord would be their strength. In your precious holy name, amen. Today I'd like to speak to you about the parable of the Good Samaritan. The word says, and behold, a certain lawmaker stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law, and how readest this? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor ask thyself and he said unto him thou has answered right this do and thou shall live but he willingly to justify himself said unto Jesus and who is my neighbor and Jesus answering said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment which means clothing and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now you have to get this picture this morning. This man was beat so bad, he was laying there stripped, naked, and half dead. And by chance, which meant someone had an opportunity. And he seen someone coming that he thought, oh, this one's going to help me. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed on the other side so in other words when he seen that the man was wounded and hurt he passed on the other side he went to the other side of the street and likewise a levite which represents a priest when he was at the place came and looked on him and passed on the other side but a certain samaritan and the Samaritans back then were considered a social outcast. So this certain Samaritan, just a good-hearted man, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. When was the last time that we had love for someone that was hurting? When was the last time that you looked at someone and maybe in your own heart, you might have judged them in the wrong way? The Word of God says in Matthew 7, Judge not, lest ye be judged. Whatever you judge a man with, you will be judged with also. We have to be really careful. We are called Christians, and we're Christ-like. Sometimes we don't want to take the time to care. Sometimes we look at someone and we think they're not fixable. There's, there's nothing that can be done for them. Sometimes we look at them and judge them. But what would Jesus do? And he went to him. Your neighbor is anyone along life's road that you meet that is hurting, that needs help. And bound up his wounds. In other words, he went to the heart of the problem. And he began to fix it. Pouring in oil and wine, which represents Christ's love. And set him on his own beast. And he put him on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. So he took him on his donkey and took him to a place to stay. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pants when he took out some money and gave them to the host, to the innkeeper, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest, more when I come again, I will repay thee. And he's telling, go ahead and take care of him. 
I have to leave, and when I get back, I will pay you back. He didn't even know this man, but he had compassion. He had mercy and he had love. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he's saying today, which one is the one that was of me? And he said unto him, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. And the Lord is calling on you today to care about people that no one else cares about. There is a remnant of people that are suffering today that you'll have one say, I don't know how to fix them. I don't know what to do with them. But you begin with prayer. You begin to pray with them and begin to love them just as the Lord would love them. It says this in Jeremiah 18. And the word came to, Jerusalem, to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise. And sometimes you have to listen to his voice and go when he tells you to go because you can miss a wonderful opportunity. There'll be a time that you'll be tested by the Lord. You may even entertain an angel unaware, according to Hebrews 13, 2. Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. And he was going to show him something. Jeremiah was considered the weeping prophet. He was one of the major prophets. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred. He was at the potter's house, and he seen a handful of clay that was ruined in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. This was a demonstration of God's love. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O house of Israel, which is us, or a spiritual Israel. We represent Christ and his love and his mercy for others. Can I not do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's house, so are ye in my house, O house of Israel. In this, the Lord is saying he did not throw the clay away. I felt like I come here today to speak to someone. I've come from Muscatine, Iowa. We have a church which is called the Jesus Mission and an outreach which is called Pearl City Outreach. Every day for the last 26 years, I've dealt with the hurting and the wounded. And there's so many people out there that need, they need God's love. And sometimes there's people that are afraid. Sometimes they don't know how to approach. Sometimes they don't know what to do. But if you would step back and pray and say, Lord, how can I help this person today? Lord, what can I do? And sometimes just begin to pray that the Spirit of the Lord will enter into them, that they will come to know Christ as their Savior. That is the beginning of a healing for them, to love them, and not just go to them and say, be saved, but go to them like the Good Samaritan and show God's love by doing something. There may be somebody today that's hurting, somebody that you don't know, and the Lord is calling on you to love them, to help them. He didn't throw the clay away, but he remade it. And I feel like there's someone here today that's backslidden. But in Jeremiah, he said, don't you know that I'm married to the backslider? He will never walk away. You'll go into places and you'll never be happy because he'll never leave you nor forsake you. According to Matthew 28, even to the ends, he will not leave you. And so many people that I work with every day and I see every day. And sometimes there's so many that I have to go home and I just have to pray, God, give me strength for a new day. But I appreciate what the work that I do because the work that I do is what people call the social outcasts. And that's what I was at one time. I praise God that I had a praying mother and father. I praise God that I had a praying sister that loved me. I was in a mess years ago, 32 years ago. I knew that I was at death's door. I was into drugs. I was into alcohol. I worked in one of the hardest bars in Muscatine. I almost hemorrhaged to death off of drugs as I laid in the hospital room. I actually seen imps come into the room. They came by the curtain where I was, and I could hear them saying, let's take her to hell 
tonight. I was afraid, but I was too stubborn. I, was, I wouldn't admit that I was full of fear. And the Lord um, just began to deal with my heart. And all at once, I found myself falling down a deep, dark hole as I laid in that hospital bed and I was wrapped in chains and I was going down and it was so cold and when I got to the bottom of this pit I could see flames shooting out and in the flames I could see people screaming for me to help them and their hands I could see their hands sticking out and part of their faces and all at once I was so scared and I looked over and I seen a huge black demon on a raft and there was a lake in the background with fire just coming out of it and I knew that this is where I was going to be forever if something didn't happen and I praise God for a praying family because if you give up on that loved one today who's going to hold them up who's going to pray them through and I know sometimes it's like is it worth it it's worth you praying them through you have power in his name you have power to cast out demons and devils. You have power to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. The Lord is calling you to strengthen yourself according to the book of Jude, where you must build yourself back up, strengthen yourself for such a time as this. For we're living in this hour where we're seeing the sign of the times. We're living in this hour of the last days. And the Lord is calling upon us to rise up like we never have before. They don't want you using the name of Jesus. The enemy knows there's power in that name you stand upon that word you stand upon what you know in your heart and you cast them out and sometimes you can't fight with flesh and blood the word of God says that sometimes you've got to go on your knees and do spiritual warfare you've got to cast that devil out on your knees sometimes you will face them face to face and you may have to cast them out but you need to grow and build yourself up even pulling them out of the pits of hell that night that I was in hell I started crying out and I started saying, Jesus, don't keep me here. Don't keep me here. I did not know my family was praying for me and they were praying for me that night and I felt like through their prayers I was pulled out from the pits of hell I ended up back in that hospital room and I know that I would be in hell 32 years right now if my family had not prayed and believed in me I didn't even believe in myself I didn't see the bigger plan what I seen was someone like me to die and I deserve to I've done so many things I can't even begin to mention I mean the alcoholic blackout the, uh, the drugs, the things that I did. But you know, we serve a Jesus. We serve a Christ that's full of grace. And he loves you. He loves you. There's no pit, no grave too deep that you're in right now that he can't pull your hand and say, this is it. And he's going to bring you up out of it. The Lord loves you. And I felt like today that I was assigned by God to drive from Muscatine, Iowa, to tell someone that, you are still loved by the Lord. You are a handful of clay that Jesus did not throw away, but he's going to remold you and remake you in what he called you to be. When I came to Christ, I didn't want to go even after I got out of the hospital. I did not want to go. And I began to get back into things. And then one night I heard his voice and he said, you have no more chances. And I called my sister and I said, I'm scared. I said, I heard a voice saying I had no more chances. And she said, well, go to church. And I said, well, I don't want to go to church. I didn't want to go to church. I said, I just want to be healed. I just want to be, I want to get out of this. But I ended up going to a camp meeting in Fredonia, Iowa. And the preacher there began to speak. And when I was going down to Fredonia, I told my dad, nobody better touch me. I'm telling you right now, nobody better ask me to go to that altar. Well, they all scooted away from me, and I was in the corner. And this preacher began to speak, and I seen some people healed. And all at once, I heard the Lord say, I love you. And I couldn't accept it. I turned my head away, and I closed my eyes. And it was as though I could see the image of him with, with tears and blood running down his face. I seen the thorns in his head, and he said, I love you. And I couldn't handle that love because I hate it myself. And he kept saying, I love you. And then he said, your chains are broken and every chain in my life was broken off. Everything that I had done was broken off.
and I was set free. And when I was set free, I went crazy for Jesus. I served him with all my heart and all my soul. My mind was still messed up from the drugs and how I began to do this. See, you cannot serve two masters. You must only serve one master. You must begin to get in this word. And I read a chapter every day and I could not understand it. And I would close the book and I would cry. But after a year, the Lord showed me, I had you read the word to heal your mind. And when my mind was healed, I began to read it again. And I began to read it again. And I became so excited with the word. I became rooted and grounded in church. And I became dedicated in any way that I could help the Lord, whether it was clean the toilet or anything that I could do, drive the van for picking up people from Muscatine. I'd take them 30 miles to church. I, I would even uh, go four times a week. And then I would come home on a Sunday night and get ready and go to work 11 to 7. I was not only healed, I was healed to work because I couldn't hold a job. But when I was healed, I worked double shifts. I was so happy to be set free. Everything was beautiful. Everything was just wonderful to me. And I took my family, my one daughter that went through so much with me, and I told her I was sorry. We still serve a God in heaven that heals if you just call upon his name today. You know, and a lot of people will talk to me and say, I, I don't believe that I can be used of God. You don't see the bigger picture. The very place where Satan tried to destroy me, the very place where there were seven bars, the very place that I was in the bars, the very place that I had blackouts and couldn't even walk a block home, the Lord brought me back after seven years. And he said, I will use you where Satan tried to destroy you and it will be for my glory. No one wants to go back to their roots. No one wants to go back to a place where they ashamed I guess the word I want to say and then people won't let you live your past down they'll shove it in your face I had to learn to rise above that I had to learn to let it roll I had to know that it was a trick of the enemy to try to get me to quit and that's where you're at today for some people you cannot let anybody get to you but you use that testimony to overcome the enemy through the word of your testimony and through the blood of the lamb he gives a promise he told Jeremiah when Jeremiah first started, Jeremiah, he didn't, he didn't really think he was called. Matter of fact, he said no. In Jeremiah 1 verse 4, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. See, you may think that I am not called. There's nothing left of me. But the Lord knew you in your mother's womb. He loved you. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I already made you holy. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. See, he's told the Lord no. You may have told the Lord no, but he's not going to let go of you. He's got a hold of you. You might as well, you're never going to be happy out there. Anywhere you go, you're not going to be happy till you surrender your life to Christ. I am here today by divine appointment on assignment to tell someone out there, the Lord has not forgotten your name. He will bring you up out of that grave and that pit that you're in now. But the Lord said unto me, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. The Lord said, I will touch your mouth, I will touch your lip. Then he says, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have set thee this day over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. The Lord is saying today, I need you. You've been through this. You can relate to others. I relate to the alcoholics and drug addicts. I see them every day. I had a miracle, and some of them don't. Some of them struggle, but I don't condemn them. I must love them right where they're at until the Lord heals them. I must know that where I'm at is holy ground. There were seven bars there at one time. They're all down. The Lord put me there on assignment. 
I didn't feel like I was worthy enough to do this, but I still don't. But he's seen something in me that I did not see. And that's what he's saying to you today. Don't you know from what you had in your experience that I need you? I need you because the Lord's going to say you have been there and you can help someone else. Take what you've done and help someone else to rise them up out of the pit. Don't give up on that person today that you're praying for. Prophesy to them. Say that they're a mighty man, a mighty woman of God. Don't put them down. And don't put yourself down. The word of God says in Job 3.25, as a man thinketh, so is he. It says, the biggest fear that I feared came upon me. The thing I feared the most came upon me, the Lord is saying. Don't fear. Over 300 times in the word of God, he said, fear not. Fear not. In Matthew... Twenty-five. I want to read this. I feel led to read this. We are called to serve. We are called to serve. In Matthew 25. The word of God says this. Then shall the king say unto them, and I'm in 34, verse 34, on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came into me. You may be in prison right now. And the Lord is saying, I'm in there with you. I am the lawyer of all lawyers. I can make a way where there seems to be no way, according to Isaiah 55. In Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. You've got to get this word in you. I hung, I hung onto this word. I had to live by faith. We had no money for a building. But I kept living by faith and trusting the Lord and helping other people. And through that, we have a building paid off. I don't gloat in that. Because I know there's people right now that are praying and wanting something and needing something to help other people. You need a building. The Lord will make a way. Just be obedient. He promises you, he promises you long life and blessings. When you pray for your family, bless them. Don't curse them. When you pray for your neighbors, bless them. Don't curse them. For when you bless them, the Lord will bless them and bless you. The word of God said, pray for those that despitefully use you. Pray for them. Why? For in the end, you'll see God turn it around. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you hungry and fed you? When did we see you thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked? And when did we clothe you? And when did we see you sick? And when were you in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Truly I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. You are feeding the Lord when you're feeding them. You are feeding Jesus. There's someone that you're quite tired of helping people, and you need to realize the Lord said, Faint not. Faint not. He'll raise you up on wings of eagles. He will bless you. He'll open up the book of life in Revelations 20. Someday you'll be able to build your treasures in heaven and everything that you have done will come forth as you have blessed so many people. You have been the Lord's eyes, his mouth, his feet, and the Lord will use you continually to the very end as his mouthpiece, as his blessing to bless others. For we are Christ-like. Then shall he also say unto them on the left hand. Now, now listen to this. Depart from me cursed into everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you didn't, you didn't clothe me. And I, I was sick and in prison and you didn't come. 
Then shall they also answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungered, a thirst, stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Barely I said unto you, inasmuch as you did it not into one of these least of these, you did it not unto me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. You may feel at times that you want to get upset with someone because they're not fixed yet. Maybe they have mental illness. Maybe they're addicted. Maybe they just have a long line of poor working ethics. But the Lord is calling on you to pray them through. He's calling on you to pray and speak and prophesy into them that they will be healed. They will be made whole. You have power of life and death in your hand for that child, for that teenager, for that adult. And it's up to you of what you do with it. But use wisdom and think twice. For the Lord today is saying that he's calling on you to make a difference. You do not see the bigger picture, but the Lord sees it. I did not know that I was called to a ministry on Mulberry. We feed nine meals a week. We started a clothes closet to give free clothing and furniture. We have a church. We also started a Flickinger Learning Center, which feed, we feed 50 to 65 children a night, and they have free tutoring. The Lord has truly, he'll take you and say, yes, I can use you. He just wants your heart today. Give your heart to him, heart to heart. Say, Jesus, I need you. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Use me. I want to be in Isaiah 6. Here I am, Lord. Use me, but clean my unclean lips. And he will send an angel to clean you up. And you will rise up to be used for the kingdom and the glory. You are so important to him. You're the apple of his eye. And he loves you so much. He will set you free in a twinkling of an eye. You get a hold of this word and just begin to read it as he begins to minister to your heart, and you will be set free. And the word says, he who is free is free indeed. You must make a commitment to this word, for the word was given to you for healing. He loves you. He loves you so much, and he's calling upon you today to rise back up and get involved and care again like you used to. I've, I've been honored to be here today. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to speak to you. And the Lord loves you very, very much. Thank you, dear Father in heaven. Bless them, Lord, today.